Hello. Welcome to this primary candidate forum co-sponsored by the Daily Record newspaper and the League of Women Voters. My name is Charlie Sorensen and I am the Voter Services Chair for the League of Women Voters of Kittitas County. Founded in 1920, the League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization with 800 affiliates across the country. It encourages informed and active participation in government, works to increase understanding of major public policy issues, and influences public policy through education and advocacy. The League never endorses candidates or political parties at any level. We don't care how you vote, only that you vote. The League membership is open to all genders, ages 16 and over, and we invite you all to join us. Our moderator for this primary candidate virtual forum event is Catherine Murphy. Catherine has been a member of the League since 2017, where she has filled a variety of roles at the state and local level. Welcome, Catherine. Thank you, Charlie. I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to moderate our virtual 2020 primary candidate forums. These events offer voters the opportunity to hear directly from candidates in response to questions sourced from within the community. As with everything else right now, we are learning how to modify traditional in-person events with virtual ones. The League of Women Voters records and retains a full unedited copy of all candidate forums. If any portion of a League forum is redistributed out of context to make a candidate appear to say something they did not say, or edited to make the candidate look bad or in any way they did not actually look in the original forum, and the League of Women Voters will alert the media, provide the unedited video for comparison, and file appropriate complaints with any applicable go government governing authority. For the virtual 2020 primary forums, we record each candidate interview using the same structure. Um, a 60 second opening statement, 90 second responses to three community sourced questions and a 60 second closing statement. The forum recordings are being offered in two formats. Viewers can watch each interview as a standalone choice. And they can also watch a five part playlist which shows all candidates in the order they appear on the ballot answering the same question in a compiled video. Part one includes this introduction and each candidate's opening statement. Parts two through four show each question being asked and then the candidate's responses. Part five shows each candidate's closing statements plus my closing remarks. The forums are available on the Kittitas County League website and on our YouTube channel, on the Ellensburg Daily Record website and on the Ellensburg Community Television, Spectrum Channel 191 and Inland Networks. Tonight's forum is for the 13th Legislative District Position 1 for the House Rep. This is a two-year term. Uh, representatives create laws on public policy matters, set levels for state spending and raise and lower taxes, serve on committees which hold briefings and hearings, meet with and help constituents. Three candidates are running for legislative District 13, Position 1, House seat. Eduardo Castaneda Diaz, John the Man Malin, and Tom Dent. Candidate Malin has not responded so far to our invitation. Now I want to welcome Eduardo Castaneda Diaz to the forum. Thank you so much for taking time to be with us. We will start with your 60 second opening statement now. Hi, my name is Eduardo Castaneda Diaz. Thank you for having me here today. Um, I'm a lifelong uh, resident of Quincy, Washington. I've served in the, Arm uh, the Army, the National Guard um, as a culinary specialist as and as a combat engineer for five years. I am a graduate of Washington State University. I'm currently working on my master's degree. Um, I'm running for office to represent those who have voices who have been unheard for far too long, uh, immigrants and uh, first generation Americans who um, have contrib contributed greatly to our region um, in the 13th uh, through agriculture. My parents are farm workers um, 
immigrants from Mexico. Um, I've been a farm worker working in Washington's cherries and apples. And it's, it's time that we have representatives that represent the interests of, of the little man, those who make our economy in central Washington possible. And um, as state, rape, uh, state rep, I hope to be a voice for those who have been uh, historically unheard. Thank you. Question one, what legislation will you introduce or support to address the economic recovery needs during this pandemic? Mr. Castaneda Diaz, you have 90 seconds to respond. Uh, thank you for, for the question. Um, first off, my heart goes out, out to all those who are currently um, surviving this pandemic. Uh, with me in, in Washington State, in, in Central Washington. Um, in order to recover, we have to invest in our infrastructure systems, um, invest in uh, our bridges. For example, yesterday, uh, Vantage Bridge, which leads uh, to Ellensburg, um, a piece of it broke off um, while people were driving on it. Uh, that's a sign that we need to invest in our, in our infrastructure. And, you know, infrastructure projects can help assist our uh, residents in recovering by giving jobs to those who will take them and help us uh, not only repair our roads and bridges but also help their families by uh, by getting these jobs. Uh, we also have to invest in uh, te technology technology companies coming into central Washington. Um, as a resident of Quincy, I've seen the great economic boost that having com that having companies such as Microsoft, Yahoo, into it. Uh, among many other companies, uh, come in to our region and uh, contribute financially by uh, increasing the tax base as well as providing jobs for those who are uh, based um, not only in Quincy but in LD13. Um, I also support uh, recruiting more teachers um, and helping small business uh, aspiring owners to uh, to pursue their dreams and at the state level we can help and that pursuit. Thank you. Question two, give three examples of how you would support removing systemic racism and inequality through legislation. Mr. Castaneda Diaz, you have 90 seconds to respond. Uh, thank you for this question as a, um, son of Mexican immigrants who grew up in a low-income um, family in central Washington. I have had my first share of experience with uh, being at the lower end of uh, American society, the part that has been forgotten historically, not only by our state, but by our nation. Um, I support um, immigrant rights. I support um, helping communities of color who have been historically marginalized by uh, the police system and by by the legal system by assisting those who are incarcerated and in, in pursuing um, re rehabilitative forms of justice not just the punitive uh, forms uh, my uh, opponent has uh, voted against any pro-immigration uh, legislation uh, to not assist undocumented students and to also uh, marginal continue the marginalization of immigrants in central washington uh, as a son of immigrants i I make the pledge to bring racial justice to our communities by assisting people of color and immigrants and other people who have been marginalized in our state and nation. Thank you. Question three. People of color are experiencing higher COVID-19 infection and hospitalization rates. Conditions contributing to this include lack of healthcare access, poor and crowded housing, transportation and working conditions, and lack of o employer oversight. If elected, describe what measures you would support to resolve at least two of these conditions. Mr. Castaneda Diaz, you have 90 seconds to respond. 
Uh, yes, the people of color have been um, highly uh, and disproportionately affected by coronavirus um, due to low income and middle class uh, families of color having to work uh, minimum wage jobs to survive. Uh, they are essential workers. They are our janitors, our cooks, our field workers, and our process workers. Uh, my opponent, Tom Dett, actually wrote and spearheaded a letter to Governor Inslee requesting that um, the health and safety uh, protocol be relaxed so we can have more farm workers living in temporary housing. As a state legislator, I want to make it known that our farm workers are essential and not uh, disposable or expendable as my opponent has made his team. I want to uh, strengthen the protections for farm and processing workers so that they are not disproportionately affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. And as we all know, families of, of color are on the lower spectrum of the socioeconomic uh, range, uh, meaning that some of us are uninsured or underinsured or lack the resources to seek medical attention. And I want to um, assist families of color and those who are low income by uh, guaranteeing a no cost um, coronavirus COVID-19 vaccine if and when it is uh, available to those who need it, which is gonna be all of us. Uh, so. That's why I want to assist uh, communities of color in uh, protecting us against COVID-19 and our health. Thank you. Mr. Castaneda Diaz, you have 60 seconds to make your closing remarks. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for this time. I want to tell the people that it is, it's been far too long that politicians have provided mere leaps, uh, lip service to our, our communities. We need politicians who do not take corporate donations, uh, those who only listen to the constituents and are there to serve the community, not to further progress their personal interests, but to gen generally serve the community. It's time that we provide civil rights protections uh, for our communities, as well as standing up for essential workers and marginalized communities of color. As a Latino, as a young millennial, I feel that I can uh, do much work in um, bridging the, ca the gap with those who have historically been marginalized and forgotten by society, not only um, in, in every other system, but mainly in our political system. It is time for proper representation for all. And I believe that I am the best candidate for that job. Thank you for this time. Thank you, Mr. Castaneda Diaz for joining us and for sharing your views with the voters of Legislative District 13. Thank you for this time. Your vote matters. As we conclude, I wanna remind everyone our ballots should arrive by July 17th and we have until 8 p.m. on August 4th to return them. If you're not registered or need to change your address, you have till the 27th to do so online or by mail. After the 27th, you can register, update your registration, and vote in person through 8 p.m. on August 4th at your county auditor's office. And if you don't get your ballot, please call or visit your county auditor right away. To get more information about all of the candidates running in the 2020 primary, the Kittitas League has created a nonpartisan online voters guide. You will find links to the candidate websites and other helpful resources. You can get information also at vote411.org and at the Washington State Secretary of State's office. Thank you to the candidates who made time to participate in this event. The Kittitas League wants to also thank the Ellensburg Daily Record newspaper for co-sponsoring the 2020 virtual primary forums and to Ellensburg Community Television, Spectrum Network, and Inland Networks for showing the forums throughout Kittitas County. Finally, thank you to the many of the League members who made this event possible. Your vote does matter. Join me by casting your ballot in the August 4th primary. Thank you. <laughs>